In this video, we'll discuss interior and exterior angles of a triangle. Some of these ideas you're already familiar with, although we'll kind of push them or kick them up a notch to the next level. Some of them might be new. One that's an old one that you've seen before is this very first one where it says the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Now this is an idea that you've been familiar with since middle school, maybe even elementary school. So this is nothing new, but did you ever stop to wonder why? How come? Is the teacher being honest with you when they say the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180? How do they know? So let's dig a little bit deeper and hopefully answer these questions. We're given some random triangle. We're going to call it ABC just so that we have something to talk about. And we want to prove how come, why, the sum of the three angles has to total 180 degrees. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to develop or borrow some ideas that we developed in our unit on parallel lines. And I'm going to start by drawing a line that's parallel to AC through point B. So through B, I'm going to draw a line that's parallel to segment AC. And if those two lines are parallel to each other, and they are because of the way I drew that, we know that this alternate interior angle at 3 and this alternate interior angle up here that I'm going to call 4 have to be congruent to each other. Anytime lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are always congruent. And in a similar fashion, this angle 1 and this angle up here that I'm going to call 5 also have to be congruent to each other. Again, whenever lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. So now I know that angles 5, 2, and 4 total together have to be 180 because they're angles on a straight line. But angle 5 is the same as this angle 1 inside the triangle. Angle 4 is the same as this angle 3 inside the triangle. And so by using a little bit of substitution, I know that the three angles together in the triangle have to total 180 as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's write this out in proof format. I started out and through point B, I drew that line that was parallel to line AC. And I'm going to call this line L just so that I can talk about it in my proof. And the reason that I can do this is because through any given point, there exists only one line that is parallel to a given line. In this particular case, the given line is line AC. Now once I have that parallel line in there, now I can go and talk about these angles being congruent. And actually I'm going to use equals because I want to talk about their measures. So measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 5. And we said the measure of angle 3 is also equal to the measure of angle 4. And I'm going to say this is because anytime we have parallel lines, so I'm going to start my reason by discussing parallel lines have, and I'm going to say alternate interior angles with equal measures. And again, ordinarily we would say they have congruent alternate interior angles, but in my proof here I want to talk about the measures of these angles, and so that's why I'm using the measures of these angles rather than congruent. Now looking at the picture, I can see that measure of angle 5 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 4 has to sum or total to 180 degrees. And that's because adjacent angles on a straight line have to sum to 180 degrees. And 
And here's where I'm going to do a little bit of fanciness, a little bit of trickery, or a little bit of magic. We said that the measure of angle 5 was the same as the measure of angle 1. So I'm going to take out the measure of angle 5 and replace it with its equal measure of angle 1. We said that the measure of angle 4 was the same as the measure of angle 3. So I'm going to take out the measure of angle 4, replace it with the measure of angle 3. So putting the purple step together with the green step, we find that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 has to sum or total to 180 degrees. And the word we use when we take one thing out and replace it with its equal is substitution. So now hopefully we've proven to you this idea that you've worked with for years about the sum of three angles in a triangle being equal to 180 degrees. All right, another theorem dealing with angles in triangles has to do with the exterior angle of a triangle. This says that the measure of any exterior angle of a triangle, so just like exterior paint is used for the outside of your house, an exterior angle is going to be on the outside of the triangle, and that measure of an exterior angle is always going to be equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So here's what this saying is saying in the picture. In this picture over here, angle ACD, because it's outside the circle, he's the exterior angle, his degree measure is going to be equal to the two that are not adjacent, in other words, not touching him, not neighbors with him. So his degree measure is going to be equal to the sum of measure of angle A and angle B. And again, like the first idea that we developed in the proof, we don't want to give you this theorem without kind of proving to you and showing you why it's true. So let's get down to business and see exactly why this is true. So in the proof, we're given triangle ABC with this exterior or external angle, ACD, and we want to prove that the measure of angle ACD, that exterior angle, is equal to the sum of the measures of angle A and angle B. In other words, the sum of the non-adjacent interior angles. Well, kind of similar to the way that I worked with the parallel lines in the first proof, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at these supplementary angles. I know that angle ACD, that exterior angle, has to be supplementary with angle ACB inside the triangle because they form a straight line. So again, instead of saying supplementary though, because I'm working with measures in this problem, I'm going to work with measures and equality rather than working with congruency. So I'm going to say the measure of angle ACB, excuse me, ACD, plus the measure of that angle inside the triangle, ACB, has to sum or total to 180 degrees. And I'm going to say angles that form a linear pair sum to 180 degrees. Ordinarily, we'd say they're supplementary, but I don't want to use the word supplementary here because I've used 180 degrees here in my reason. All right. Now, because of the proof that I did in the first example, I know that the sum of the three angles together in the triangle has to sum to 180 degrees. So the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the third angle in that triangle, angle ACB, also has to total to 180 degrees. So the angles in a triangle sum or have a sum equal to 180 degrees. Now if I look at these two equations, I have 180 degrees in both places. So I'm going to pull a little bit of substitution here and pull these two guys together. So in my next step, I can say that the measure of angle ACD is equal, sorry, the measure of angle ACD 
plus the measure of angle ACB, the left side of this equation up here, is equal to measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus measure of angle ACB. And that's just substitution. You might or might not have noticed that this fella ACB appears twice. What I want to do is I want to subtract him away from both sides of the equation. But before I can subtract him away, I've got to bring him into the, to the proof. So I'm going to use a little bit of reflexive property here and say the measure of angle ACB is equal to the measure of angle ACB. And that's reflexive property. And now I can go ahead and subtract that away from both sides. So when I subtract it away from the left side, I end up with the measure of angle ACD. Subtract it away from the right side, you end up with measure of angle A plus measure of angle B. And that is the angle subtraction theorem. So there you have it, folks. Not only is it true, but we've proven exactly why or how come it's true. So now you can see exactly why that works the way it works. I don't know if New York State will ever make you write a proof like this. They might. They might not. But now you've seen one and hopefully know how to do one. Up at the top of the next page, like always, in your own words, take a few minutes to think about and reflect upon what you've seen in the video and what are the important takeaways. And then you can go ahead and take a look at the two questions on page 7.